Gash, the sophomore out of Hendersonville, North Carolina, makes the big sack. So Wilson Hoyle, who hit earlier from 35, is going to try a 40-yarder here for Wake Forest. Kick, not a lot on it, and it is no good. Hoyle upset with himself, didn't get what he wanted on that kick. Didn't even sound right. No, it didn't. Real flat sound to that one. Only the second field goal in seven tries that Hoyle has got connected on this year. That's been a common malady for this Wake Forest offense this year to get down in the scoring zone and miss fire. More often than not, they've turned the ball over. Three wide receivers set for North Carolina as it works from its own 25-yard line. Trailing 10-7. Keep it on the ground with Jordan. Got a couple, that's it. Rudy Thompson made initial contact from his defensive end linebacker position. There he is, number 66. Now you get into the situation, if you're the Wake Forest defense, where you say, yeah, maybe I'm going to put seven, maybe eight guys in the line of scrimmage. I'm going to make that Carolina offense throw the football. Burnett has been a little shaky back there in the pocket. He's had plenty of time to throw, but has been high and wide on his tosses so far. Not this time. First down at the 42 to Julia Reese. 15-yard gain. That one was right on the money. He looked a lot better throwing that ball. Watch how he's so much more up on his toes for this pass because it's off of play action where he's moving around a little bit. It seems like when he's in the straight drop back mode, he's back on his heels. That time, a better job of releasing the ball, and you want to get it to this guy. He has got great potential. True freshman. He's to the bottom of your screen. First down, North Carolina, its own 42-yard line. Staples stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nice defensive play by Trig Brody. Brody playing in the defensive tackle spot, stepped around the Carolina blocker and reached out and knocked him down. He's got good speed. He's about a 4'8", 4'9", 40 at 270 pounds. That's a little bit frightening. No, it. 6'4", 272. No gain on the play. Second and 10, North Carolina. Staples, the tailback, has seven carries for 33 yards, and he's got the toss sweep on the right side. Across midfield. First down in the Wake Forest territory all the way down to the 40-yard line. 18-yard pickup, and now he's got over 50 yards on the day. This was just great physical skill. Speed can do it for you every time. Wake Forest had the picket line out there, but Staples was a half step ahead of everybody, and all they could get on him was a hand or one arm. And he's a good enough running back. You're going to need more than just one arm to bring him down. And over 1,400 yards as a senior in high school, an average of about seven yards a carry. Nothing with the fullback inside. That was Falkerson, who was hit by, the, by Rudy Thompson at the line of scrimmage. The success that Carolina has had running the football this afternoon has been primarily to their right behind Crowley and Oberg or straight up the middle with Carl Watts, the center. They've not been as successful going to their left. They average 174 a game on the ground. It's been the passing game that's been a problem. I don't know if that was a design quarterback draw, but Burnett goes down for a loss on the play. Rudy Thompson in there again, along with Terry Smith. The guy who made the play was the nose man, Michael Smith. He slid right underneath the center. See if we can pick it up here. Watch number 30 slide right through and nearly drops Burnett in the backfield. That was a quarterback draw. It was a planned play, but Mr. Smith broke it up situation Carolina does not like to find itself in. Third down and almost 11. Burnett has plenty of time. And he overshot Julius Reese, who again maybe had a half step on the defensive back. 
And a flag on the play as well, Brad. And it's going to go against Carolina. It's a holding call against the Tar Heels. Carolina seeing Wake Forest in a deep zone, but it's still the same problem for Chucky Burnett. He throws this ball off his heels, gets the nose of the ball up, and that makes it sail, and he's got no hope of getting the ball to Julius Reese. Wake Forest declines the holding call, leaves well enough alone, a third down at 10, and McAllister will come in to punt. McAllister's punt will be from the 41. Ricky Prohl back at the 10-yard line for Wake Forest. Callister, one fake punt and one 44-yard kick so far on the day. High lazy spiral. Ricky Prohl calls for the fair catch and he gets out of the way. And North Carolina's going to down this at about the two-yard line. I think Prohl may have lost that one in the sun, if you can believe it. Five minutes, 23 seconds till halftime. Wake Forest with a 10-7 lead. 39-yard clock by Scott McAllister. Back in Chapel Hill, North Carolina trails by a field goal with 5.23 to go in the first half. Brad Nessler, Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood along with you. Here's what goes on on the sideline. They know that they missed an opportunity there. They're hoping the defense can force a three and out. Wake Forest working just outside its own two-yard line. Anthony Williams to about the four. North Carolina doesn't want to give up anything to Wake Forest here, having pinned them down at the two-yard line after that 39-yard McAllister punt. And they don't want to give up the field position now. Some say that might be a little dangerous, throwing the toss sweep from your end zone. But Williams was able to push it out close to the five-yard line. But they have got the ball on the proper side of the field now for the left-hander Barnhill. He has got the wide side to his left. Pickett's the motion man. Straight ahead. Out near the eight-yard line, where it's going to be third down about four. Bill Dooley wants to get the first down here because there's still lots of time left, about 4.20 to play here in the first half. But how adventurous does Bill want to be here? Third and four inside his 10-yard line. He sends in Ricky Kroll with the play. He's a guy I'd get it to somehow. Some kind of little stop up or quick curl route beyond the first down marker if you can. Third down at four. They'll keep it on the ground with Williams. And he didn't get the first down. Took a big shot at about the 11-yard line, and he's short by about one. Tommy Thigpen came in there in a hurry. Tommy Thigpen, the high school All-American out of Potomac High School in Northern Virginia. Boom! What a hit! That's why he was a high school All-American, I guess. We've seen some big-time tackles today. Wake Forest to punt it away. And North Carolina's Randall Felton just has to let this one go down to the 39-yard line. Not bad by Kim Sheiky. Line drive the ball, but got the right kind of bounce. Take that punt 50 yards, considering the circumstances. So North Carolina's defense did what Jack said they had to do, three and out. And they take over with great field position at their own 39. North Carolina trailing 10-7 here with 3.20 to go first half. Chucky Burnett, all kinds of daylight in front of him, throws on the run complete of the 44-yard line to Randall Felton. And again, when Burnett throws off the run, when he's got some movement in his legs, he seems to be a much better quarterback. 17-yard gain. He looks like a totally different young man, doesn't he? Play action to the right, reverses back left. Look how much more confidently and how much more of his body he puts behind the ball when he throws on the run. I think he's had too much time in the pocket a few times. He's gotten lazy and just kind of stood straight up and doesn't deliver it nearly as well. Just got the handoff to Jordan, who got it to the 41, picked up three. 
with under three minutes to go, first half. Marvin Mitchell. Getting back to Chucky Burnett again, you forget that a youngster, even with all the good high school success that Burnett had, and well over 3,200 yards last year and 6,500 yards in his high school career, he might not be as technically sound as you need to be in college, and that's going to take time. Carolina second and seven. The Wake Forest 41 yard line. Randy Jordan. Just inside the 40. Picked up two, maybe three again. Terry Smith made the stop for Wake Forest, and now North Carolina appears to have themselves in a passing situation. Third down and six coming up. Right in the middle of the field. Let's see if they go to the three receivers set, the three wideouts, and then come back with the quick trap. It worked for Wake Forest with their fullback to set up a good drive. They're in the eye formation with the three wide receivers. Staples, the tailback in the eye. Play action, Burnett. Fires incomplete intended for Randall Felton. Pretty good coverage over there defensively by Wake Forest. George Coghill, redshirt freshman out of Fredericksburg, Virginia, did an excellent job of putting the coverage on Felton. Carolina in four down territory, figuring with 136 to go in the first half. We're too far out for Gwaltney. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Now they're going to put it away. Decides to the ball. I thought he was going to go for it. I had a big smile on my face over here. I thought, I love this. Mac Brown's going on fourth and six. This is great. And <laughs> he's going to punt it away. Play the percentage a little bit more. Another high kick by McAllister. This one's going in the end zone. Touchback. And for all the second guessers, Brad, that becomes a net punt of 20 yards. Right. You might have wanted to try and gamble and go for it on fourth down. But Mac also knows I get the football to start the second half. So again, let's let's be cautious. Mac Brown's Tar Heels trailing 10-7 here with 129 to go first half. And now this word from the ACC. Forest has 107 with a clock running, 106 and working its way down, leading 10-7 with a second down along five of their own 25. Rolls the motion. Cross week to Williams. Close to the first down, but I don't think he got there. Penalty markers are down. Might have had an illegal block right at the end of the play. Flag down. Holding call against Wake Forest. And this would negate what was almost a first down run by Williams and maybe change the thinking of Bill Dooley a little bit. With 51 seconds, they might choose just to head to the locker room with the lead. Holding. Offensive team. 10-yard penalty from the spot holding of the foul. Pete, Wake second Forest. down. And coming up in 51 seconds at halftime around the league, Mike Hogwood with one for the books. We'll have our student athlete of the week and the scores and highlights, scores of other games going on around the country and highlights of this matchup, which has been a good one. Some great hitting by both teams today. And Barnhill has highlighted things with a 59-yard touchdown pass to Steve Brown. Second and 14. A little delay give to Williams. He didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Dennis Tripp drops him for a loss. And with that holding penalty backing up Wake Forest, they were forced to be more conservative. Carolina with two timeouts left. Going to be in a situation they use one right here to stop the clock with 27 seconds to play. And figure, stop them on third down, use our final timeout. We're going to get this ball around midfield with... 15 seconds or so, you get one completion and maybe try the field goal. Good call. Carolina with the timeout. 
And the dilemma for Wake Forest here is you're, you're third in a mile. So you figure, well, I've got to run the ball because I don't want to stop the clock with an incompletion and give them an extra timeout, if you will. So you get your punter ready. I don't think this guy will be eligible, though. <laughs> He'd be able to see over the defense pretty well. How'd you like to try to fit him with some spikes? Look at those feet. How'd you like to try and fit him with a helmet? <laughs> be about a size 16 and 3 8 maybe, yeah. huh? <laughs> That's a nice approach. The old straight-on kicker. I said, I'm going to the boat. And I would guess Carolina will come with everybody on fourth down in the punting situation and maybe come up with a turnover that way with a block punt, perhaps a touchdown, perhaps a safety. Carolina brings in their dime package defensively. In fact, they bring in Cliff Baskerville, another freshman, yet another freshman, in the defensive secondary for Mac Brown. Mac's got one timeout remaining, so he is... Aware of that situation, I'm sure has talked it over with his defensive personnel that as soon as you hear that whistle, you start signaling for that timeout. Max one and one lifetime against the Demon Deacons. Of course, 0 and one as head coach at North Carolina, but pulled out an upset win when he was the head man at Appalachian State. So here we got the third down situation and 17 yards to go for Wake Forest in North Carolina. Bill Barnhill at the controls is 5 of 11 for 107 yards. Will he put it up? Find out right now. Toss sweep Williams. Another form tackle, Eric Gash. Another loss on the play. Another North Carolina timeout. And now it's fourth down and about 18. Well, you try and run a sweep because it'll take a little bit more time as a rule. Eric Gash says no. Quickly get the timeout goal. Gash has made some outstanding hits in the open field. He, too, was a high school All-American out of Hendersonville High School here in North Carolina. Reads the sweep. Steps up and, oh, that's just perfect. Going to be some bruises tomorrow for this one. Randall Felton goes back as the deep man for North Carolina with 28 seconds to go in the half. Wasn't there 27 seconds to go before the that's what I previous thought. play? Like the clock went the other way. They added three to the, okay, they added three, three. to the clock prior to that Oh, they play. added eight seconds to the clock on the previous play. I thought I was going crazy, or at least more than normal. Right. <laughs> North Carolina with ten men up. Oh, they almost got to the kick. Pelton back pedals at the 45. And only got about a yard on the return. Nice coverage by Wake Forest. So 18 seconds to go. 42-yard kick, a one-yard return. Attack was by Warren Beeman. Well, talk about pressure. Kim Sheik knew get rid of this ball in a hurry. And Reggie Clark was coming. Very close to being called for running into the kicker. North Carolina, three wide receivers set at its own 46-yard line with 18 seconds to play in the half. Deep in the middle. Is it intercepted? Nope. Scraped off the turf by Lamont Scales and almost complete to Julius Reese. I've been impressed with George Coghill. Watch number three, the cornerback for Wake Forest here. He stepped right in front of Julius Reese and nearly picked off the ball. And then Brad Benson, or make it Lamont Scales, nearly comes up with it. Sometimes defensive backs forget they've got as much a right to the ball when it's in the air as the receiver does. They get so worried about penalty markers. Second down, Burnett rolls for his life. Throws on the run. For Phil. Oh, he almost got to it and a flag down at the five. Julius Reese, the intended receiver, as Burnett went deep. With five seconds left in the half. So it's going to be a, 
pass interference call, but the penalty, of course, not at the five-yard line where the flag went down, but rather walked off from the line, and let's see where they spot it, at the 39-yard line. Pass interference, 15 yards, previous spot foul, automatic first down. There you have it from C.C. Daly, and here's another look. Boy, Burnett almost crossed the line of scrimmage making this throw as well, just got it off. Michael Smith was bearing down on him. And the bump was there with Coghill and Reese. North Carolina is going to try a long field goal with five seconds left in the half. 55-yard attempt by Gwaltney. He got quite a bit on it, too. Enough? Not quite. Just short. And he knew he had it on a line, and he tried the back pedal for English and every other thing, and it wouldn't quite go through for him. So they play for the long field goal in the tie at halftime. As it is, Wake Forest maintains a three-point cushion at intermission. Demon Deacons with a 10-7 lead on the power of a long touchdown pass from Barnhill to Brown and a field goal. And Coach Dooley's team has a three-point lead. And he's with Mike Hogwood on the sideline. Mike? Coach Dooley, I know you're happy to have the lead. You, you saved one there here at the end. Well, we're uh, happy to be out in front, but uh, not happy the way we're playing. You know, we, we had a couple of other opportunities we weren't able to cash in on. All right, anything you're going to talk to him about at halftime specifically? You want to come out and do the second half? Well, the same old thing. Don't uh, let your own miscues hurt you. And, uh, you know, we can't give them the big play. That's the big thing. We can't give Carolina the big play. All right, good luck second half. Bill Dooley, the head coach at Wake Forest. And we will be back to take you around the league in a moment after these words from your local ACC station. Remember, Brandon Wilton. So the Tar Heels of North Carolina, who won the toss at the beginning of the ball game, deferred to the second half, and they'll get it first here in the third quarter, trailing 10-7. Wilson Hoyle will tee it up. His counterpart on the other side, Clint Gwaltney, from almost 56 yards right before halftime, got a lot of leg into the football. Actually, it grazed the under portion of the crossbar, or we'd have a tie ball game. Carolina with Torin Doran and Randy Jordan, the deep men. And we're underway in the second half. Jordan takes it on the run at the 12 yard line. Out across the 25 to the 26. Ron Lambert made the hit on the special teams. And the North Carolina offense comes out with one touchdown to its credit today. To the 26 yard line, tackled by Lambert. A 15 yard return. Brown in his second season here in Chapel Hill. Sixth year overall as a head coach, 19 and 41 his career record. And as he told Mike Hogwood, Chucky Burnett stays in there at quarterback, brings up his offense at the 26 yard line. Aaron Staples, nice stiff arm, got across the 35 to the 36. George Coghill ran him out of bounds, but he did a nice job to get away at about the 30-yard line. I think it was Lamont Scales that he leveled. As we saw in the first half, Carolina has had better success running to their right and running to the outside. The excellent stiff arm indeed by Aaron Staples to get out near first down yardage. This is the kind of play call they want for Chucky Burnett. Second and one. New career high for Staples. Jack 62 yards on the day on nine carries. Second down, less than a yard. Staples first down and then some out to the 44-yard line. Brad Benson made the hit defensively for Wake Forest. Carolina's touchdown drive was done exclusively on the ground after the fumble recovery. Burnett has not had success throwing the football, and that's what they want to do is just keep banging away on the ground, and if they have to throw the ball, do it out of some kind of rollout setup. First and 10, Tar Heels at their own 44. Just underway here in the third quarter. Toss sweep to Staples on the left side. Nice job of stretching it out by James DuBose, who had an interception earlier in the game, and a flag down at the end of the play. Scales and James DuBose. Get the preliminary call here. Face mask against Wake Forest. Preliminary signal is... That'll drive you crazy. James DuBose makes the play and it 
cost him. Five yard face mask penalty, defense. Repeat first down. They stretch out the sweep very, very well this time. A good job by Terry Smith to force them to go outside. And Dubose got a little piece of them right in plain view of the head linesman, and he made the correct call. So a first and five situation at midfield for North Carolina. Three wide receivers set again for Chucky Burnett. And off play action, he wants to put it up. On the run. Got Walkerson, his fullback at the 42. Eight-yard gain in the first down. And again, as we've said, Chucky Burnett looks much better as a rollout quarterback. He takes a heck of a pop right after he releases the ball from Todd Middleton. But again, he throws the ball with much more body. I tell you what, Brad Benson, I think, deflects this ball into Falkerson. Well, he took a lick. At the 42, North Carolina with a first down. Trap play, Staples inside the 40. Maybe to the 39, we'll give them three. Second down and seven. Staples a senior out of Fieldale, Virginia, and having a great day. In fact, a career day as he's gonna come out now. But you gotta give North Carolina credit. Their tailback spot, and there's a new career high, 73 yards. Of course, Kennard Martin, last year's ACC rushing champion, no longer a part of this team. Eric Blunt's out with an injury, so Staples and Jordan have done the work at the tailback spot, and they've done it well today. Second down at seven. Jordan in there now is the tailback in the eye. He gets the call. Fights his way near the 36. Still bring up third down at about four. Close enough to be in a situation where you can say, hey, we're definitely going to run this football here. You're in that tweener set where you're going to have to come off the ball well and maybe catch Wake Forest thinking pass to be real successful running the ball. But I think that's what Mac Brown would like to do. Third down and four, North Carolina. Again, three wideouts. They'll pitch it to Jordan. White inside the 35 to the 34. Lamont Scales over there along with Laverne Phelan. And it's going to be about a fourth down and one. Or maybe one and a half. And they pushed it back out closer to almost the 34-yard line. I'd say that's fourth and at least two. They're going to go for it. Wade Galtney hit that field goal right before halftime. You could always give him a shot here, too, but Mac Brown has decided to go for it. Fourth down, and as Jack said, it's almost two. Big play for the Carolina offense at the Wake Forest 34-yard line. And a penalty, delay a game against North Carolina. on the offensive team exceeding the 25 second count. It looked like Burnett might have been trying to change the play up, Jack. He turned around and had words with Benefield and his tailback and uh, just never got that play off. Well, they were a little late getting the play in Callister after will. deciding whether or not to go for it and the then late at the line of Rick scrimmage. Control is deep for the Deacons. McAllister's punted well today. He's been in the same spot on the field virtually all game with these punts. Ricky Kroll, of course, lets it go. It bounces at the two and goes into the end zone for the touchback. So a 39-yard kick, and it doesn't net too much again for North Carolina. 11.49 to go third quarter. Wake Forest 10, North Carolina 7. Back at Kansas Stadium, 10-7. Wake Forest, and they've got the football. Their own 20-yard line. Three wide receivers set for the Deacons. Barnhill keeps it on the ground of Williams. Nice job defensively. Hollier made the first hit. Leading tackler in the ACC. Forced Williams outside. He got a couple. Cecil Gray. We're in a 10-7 ball game here because both teams 
are a little hesitant to try and get real deep on offense, and both defenses are gearing up to not allow the big play to beat them. When you're one and three and 0-3 and one, you really worry about the big play taking you emotionally as well as literally out of a football game. And so both teams are operating very cautiously here in the second half and early going. Had it not been for a big play for Wake Forest, they'd be trailing, but they got a 59-yard touchdown, Bob. Anthony Williams, big hole. Williams on his way, all the way near midfield. Doxy Jordan brought him down, not before he went 27 yards in a hurry. Of course, some coaches can tell you every play is designed to go for a touchdown. This is a little inside trap and a good block right at the point of attack by Rod Ferguson. Anthony Williams does the rest, running straight up the field before Doxy Jordan knocked him down. He's got 75 yards on 14 carries after that 27-yard pickup, and he's got it again. Tough sledding this time. How you're in on the stop, along with Willie Joe Walker. Pickup of two, it'll be second and eight. But for Wake Forest, the long run by Williams on the previous play gives them good field position for the first time in a while, and now they can hopefully take advantage of the better balance in their offensive attack than at least uh, at least North Carolina has had this afternoon or this year. He'll have Pro and Brown to his left, and of course he's a left-hander, Phil Barnhill. Pick it to the top of your screen. Corey Donald's the motion man on a bootleg. Barnhill goes complete Barnhill's to Corey Donald at the 45-yard uh, 45 45-yard line. Still a third down at Ready four coming up. For Carolina. With a guy who is as consistent as Ricky Prohl is, and with the emergence of Steve Brown midway through last year, and again here in 1989, you can use those guys lots of times as decoys, and that's all they did there. They had Prohl and Brown clear the zone. There's Ricky Prohl. And throw underneath to Donald Barnhill didn't make a good enough throw that Donald could run with it after he caught it. Prohl's the slot man there at the top of your screen. Here comes the blitz. Barnhill, one hopper intended. For Bobby Jones, we got a penalty marker down. We have a holding call on the blitz against Wake Forest. That's what the Tar Heels are saying, anyway. So now, do they take the penalty or decline it and bring up the fourth down? Holding on the offensive team, decline, fourth down. There's our answer. Kim Sheik's going to have to come in and punt it away for Wake Forest. Bill Dooley not too happy. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, he had a few words for one of the officials that he was not happy about something. They've been close to Kim Sheik today, but they had the return set up. The Tar Heels do. Sheik's kick is going to carry into the end zone. That's back valiant effort by the Wake Forest special teams, but they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Pretty good punting duel, wouldn't you say, this afternoon between McAllister and Sheik. They have helped their defenses a great deal here today. But again, it gets back to what I just talked about when Wake Forest got the possession to start things here. The defenses this afternoon are in a situation where they're not allowing the big play and Mac Brown's going to go with Jonathan Hall to shake things up offensively. So Hall comes off the bench. Gives it off to Jordan. Broke one tackle. Maybe got two yards out of it as Warren Beelan made the hit. You get a look at Jonathan Hall. Mitchell was out one season with a bad shoulder, then battled back last year, and his passing arm was not what it had been earlier in his career. But as Mac Brown told us, he's a better man, he felt, to bring off the bench in place uh, Burnett was struggling, which has been the case today. And Jonathan Hall had a great game last year against Wake Forest, threw for nearly 260 yards against the Demon Deacons. play action in trouble got rid of it threw into a little bit of traffic it's incomplete Benefield the intended receiver the fullback it's pretty good athletic effort by Jonathan Hall they were trying to run a little screen to the short side of the field to Benefield the fullback but the pressure from Wake Forest immediately made that a perilous situation and Hall was lucky to just get away with the incomplete pass 
ball looks to the sideline on a third down and eight. North Carolina at its own 22-yard line, trailing 10-7. Carolina hasn't converted in their last four third down situations. Ball with time. Goes deep and overshot Julius Reese. Julius Reese has had some openings today, and he's got to be wondering if one of the quarterbacks is ever going to put it on the money to him. So three and out for Carolina, and McAllister is going to have to kick it away. One of the problems, I think, this afternoon for the Carolina passing attack, and that's sometimes the way it goes with young receivers as well as young quarterbacks, there's no doubt right from the get-go where the quarterback wants to throw the ball, and the defense is able to react to it. McAllister maybe gets some pressure here from Wake Forest. A high kick away. Ricky Pro might have room this time. From the 32. Nowhere to go. Nice coverage by North Carolina. 46 yard kick and just a one yard return for Ricky Pro. 8-19 to go third quarter. Wake Forest holds to a 10-7 lead. We'll be back after this word from your local stations. With a field goal lead and a change on their offensive line due to an injury. Mike Hogwood's got more on the sideline. Sophomore Scott Swanson, Brad, went out on that last series. He has a sprained ankle. Just talk to the trainer. He will not be back this afternoon. All right, Mike, thanks. That means Steve Ainsworth comes in, a redshirt freshman, to play left guard. He's number 62 as Wake Forest brings it up to the ball at the 34-yard line. and Prohl both to the left side. Barnhill rolls that way on the run. Ricky Prohl. And he paid for that reception, his third of the day. Got it across the 40. Cookie Massey made the hit. Seven-yard gain. Barnhill paid for it, too. Roy Barker unloaded on him. What's the hit that Barnhill gets from Roy Barker? Kabong. Yo. <laughs> So you want to play quarterback, son. <laughs> Picked up almost seven. Second down and three. Anthony Williams, a motion man. Barnhill rolls back the same way again. Again, he's in trouble, and he goes down this time. Alex Samak is going to get credit for the sack, along with Ricky Shaw also there. It was Barker again, Roy Barker, as you see Scott Swanson heading for the locker room, done for the day after spraining his right ankle. Wake again trying that roll right, come back left to the short side. He's trying to get to Ricky Prohl on that crossing route, but this time the pressure is too much, and once he had to duck under Barker, there was no way he could relocate Prohl in the secondary. Now it's third down and eight. Wake at its own 36-yard line. And we've got a delay a game against Wake Forest. The left game, offensive team, exceeding the 25 seconds. Backs it up to the 31 as Marco Pickett comes in with a play from Bill Dooley, and now it's third down and 13. Well, they'll bring Corey Donald in at the tailback spot. He's a little quicker, and they'll try and get him the ball in the passing set if they can. Prohl and Pickett. Now Prohl goes off the field. Pickett's to the top of your screen with Brown to the left side. Barnhill on third down at 13. Quarterback draw across the 40. First down. And he's all the way to the 48-yard line. Picked up 14. First Pick up 18 yards on the carry. Well, it really helps when a quarterback's got the ability to run at the college level, even at the pro level for that matter. And Phillip Barnhill's been averaging nearly four yards a carry. The junior out of Washington, D.C., comes up with a crucial first down for the Demon Deacons. At their own 48-yard line, Prohl in motion. Gets it on the end of round. Ricky Prohl behind his blockers down to the 46 of North Carolina. Dwight Hollier again in on the tackle. 
Got help from Bernard Timmons, the other inside linebacker. The two top tacklers right there, 53 and 42 for North Carolina a year ago. Hoggier had 117, and Timmons had 111. So they're the guys that uh, they kind of funnel the action to, and they make the hits. Hoggier, what, 15 tackles a game, Jack? Something like that. And Ricky Prohl had the, the new guy on the offensive line, Steve Ainsworth, the redshirt freshman out of Williamsburg in front of him, and Ricky pushed him by the backside and said, get going, son. <laughs> Has a little more speed than Ainsworth, I'm afraid. Second down along five. Barnhill off play action. Wants to go deep in the middle. And he's got his man. No, incomplete. Bobby Jones had a hand on it, but took a shot back there and couldn't hold on. Bobby Jones had excellent hearing on that play. <laughs> he heard some people around him. Watch him tiptoe around this football. He had the chance to catch that ball, and just as it was coming to him, those arms got about gator length, <laughs> and you just don't catch the ball if you don't extend for it. Take the shot anyway. You might as well hold on. Yeah, you're going to get hit. That's right. Might as well hang out of the ball so you don't get the verbal shot on the sidelines. Wake Forest, four out of nine on third down today. Here comes the blitz, and Barnhill's hitting the ball is loose, and North Carolina's recovered. Cookie Massey with the hit. Samakis, I think Samantha's got the ball. Cookie Massey on a safety blitz from his strong safety position. Another one of those freshmen. 17 freshmen on the two deep for Mac Brown. Phil Barnhill had no chance from the blind side. Massey on the safety blitz. One more look at it. He's trying to go deep. And how important was the drop pass on the previous play by Bobby Jones? And Chucky Burnett comes back in at quarterback at midfield. North Carolina trailing by a field goal. Play action, bootlegs it to the right and throws on the run. Nice job defensively by George Coghill, who got a hand in there on the last instant. You want to know what kind of athlete George Coghill is as Chucky Burnett looks to the sidelines? George Coghill, watch the play here. This is that reaction speed that a cornerback has to come. The, the ability to make up ground on the football. Great play. He played baseball this past spring in the outfield for the Demon Deacons and managed to take time off and finish fifth in the conference in the triple jump. Just your basic athlete, huh? Yeah, not too bad, huh? <laughs> Second and ten at midfield. Staples trying to get to the corner and got there. And has a first down, or very close to it, at the 40-yard line. Lamont Scales ran him out. Pick up of ten. And now Staples is inching toward a 100-yard day. It looked like Wake Forest had this play stretched out again. But the patience of Staples this time enabled his blockers to do a good job at the point of attack. Excellent block on James Dubose, the outside linebacker, who looked like had sealed off the corner, but Staples was able to turn up field and now has 86 yards on the afternoon. Had only 25 yards a year ago rushing the football. And you saw what he's doing on the day. First down, North Carolina, the Wake Forest 40-yard line. Here's Staples going the other way. Four tough yards as he's got 90 on the afternoon. Lamont Scales came up from the secondary along with Rodney Hogue, the inside linebacker. There are good bloodlines from lots of families. There's a good bloodline for blocking in the Donnelly family. Of course, Rick Donnelly was a great player here at North Carolina on the offensive line. His younger brother, Kevin, the left tackle for Carolina, excellent job blocking on Terry Smith on that last play. Second down and six. Staples, nice move in the backfield just to avoid a loss, and he got it near the 31-yard line. Brad Benson up from the secondary made the hit. Now's the time when you're asking your respective line to be able to do a little bit more. It's, it's a warmer day for the first full weekend of October, and getting into the latter minutes of the third quarter, you're asking those big guys to take that deep breath and be able to hold the fort or push it down if you're on the offensive side. Big third down, North Carolina only 28% on their third downs this year, but they got this one from Benefield, their fullback, who broke 
through the initial line and found himself with an opening but couldn't keep his footing or he might have been off to the races. I think he expected to get hit a little harder back there. Well Michael's not a big guy as we said earlier just 5'8 and he felt like he had to go airborne to get over the pile and get the first down. Didn't find any resistance but couldn't stay on his feet. At the 28 of Wake Forest North Carolina first down trailing 10-7 here in the third quarter and Benefield again inside the 25 near the 24 yard line. Todd Middleton helped out on the tackle that time. Tackled by Todd Middleton after a four yard game. Chucky Burnett, freshman out of Burlington, North Carolina. 5'11 and a half, 188. Second down along six coming up for Carolina. They got 2.55 to go third quarter. Star Heels trail 10-7. Blitz coming. Hogue makes the hit on Staples who got a short gain out of it. Burnett barely got rid of the football. Chris Smith was blitzing from one of the inside linebacking spots. Almost got Burnett before the handoff and then the other inside linebacker Rodney Hogue was able to be right there in the hole and set up that third and long for the Carolina defense or the Carolina offense the Wake Forest defense excuse me third down and a long six uh, for North Carolina's Corey Holiday checks in as an extra wide receiver to go with Julius Reese and Randall Felton Burnett dropped the ball picks it up Dives to the 20, short of the first down. They'll bring up fourth down and two in another situation coming up for Mac Brown. Do you play for the tie here? And Burnett is hurt. Hobbling as he comes up, a knee or an ankle for the freshman. Had trouble with the exchange from the center, and then kind of one hopped it to pick up what he could. And we've got a timeout with two minutes, two seconds to go third quarter. Still, Wake Forest holding a 10-7 lead. Let's see if we can pick up where Chucky Burnett gets hurt. He fumbles the exchange from Carl Watts, has the wherewithal to pick it up and try and find some positive yardage. And right there, looked like his right ankle when he landed as he went airborne was twisted or his left ankle, I should say. Left ankle, left knee that got twisted. Clint Gwaltney just missed a 56-yard field goal at the end of the first half. This one from 37 on its way. We got a tie game. Clint Gwaltney was only two out of eight on the season before that field goal, and now we're dead even at 10-10. One minute, 47 seconds to go third quarter, all even, and we'll be back in Chapel Hill in a moment. Gwaltney's field goal ties it at 10. Let's get out of the sideline and find out about uh, the condition of Chucky Burnett. Mike Hogwood, Mike. Well, Brad, uh, Chucky Burnett just got up and tried to walk around on his knee. It's his knee that hurts. He, he does have a lot of pain. Uh, the doctor says they really don't know what the heck is wrong with it, but they're sure concerned here on the sideline. Kind of doubtful he'll be back today. They're putting ice on it, going to try to ice it down to keep the swelling down. They're concerned about Chucky Burnett for the future and the rest of this season. So that means, and you see the numbers on Burnett on the day, that Jonathan Hall will be the man that will get the call the next time North Carolina gets the football. And it also puts into jeopardy if Burnett is seriously hurt. Carolina's plans are hoped for plans to redshirt Todd Burnett. If Burnett, Chucky Burnett can't play, they will probably have to get Todd Burnett ready, maybe even for this afternoon's action. So Gwaltney, who hit the field goal to cap a 30-yard scoring drive, set to kick it away to Anthony Williams. Nice deep kick. Gwaltney pumped up after the field goal, no doubt. Touchback. And Wake Forest will have to work from its own 20-yard line. Wick Waltney, 37-yard field goal a moment ago. His 17th, 18th point of the season. Wake Forest has been relatively conservative 
in the initial portions of their drives this afternoon. That's because for the most part they have not had good field position this afternoon. But as you near the end of this third quarter, they can't afford to keep going in these low scoring ball games. Barnhill, bootleg throws, complete to Brown. The man he hit for the touchdown early in the ball game. Picked up eight, it'll be second and two. I think we'll see a little bit more of that. First down pass throwing from Phil Barnhill to try and take some of the stunting pressure off of him. Carolina, particularly on second down and third down, has been involved in some very serious stunning, particularly with defensive backs. We'll first down a, passing takes care of that. We'll give them nine on the first down play, second and a yard to go, and a loss on the play as Cecil Gray levels Tony Rogers. Gray's the guy they expect big things from on that defensive line. He played behind Tim Goad and Reuben Davis, who were big hitters for North Carolina and now are starters in the NFL. And here he just plays off his block and a loss of about three. Good play by Cecil Gray, but not a very smart running path by Tony Rogers because he ran right into his blocker, Nabala, and Gray was able to take care of both of them. That's where blockers have a tendency to turn around and say, you have to remember to keep your eyes open. <laughs> Ran right up his back, and a loss makes it third down and almost four to go for Barnhill. Got it complete to the 32-yard line, and that's a first down to Bobby Jones. It appears they feel they can do a little more on this left side again Barnhill being a left-handed quarterback would feel more comfortable throwing that way but I think they also feel that they can pick a little bit on the right cornerback of Carolina and they've now gone back to the senior Clarence Carter at right corner Clarence Carter matched up over there with Marco Pickett this time the roll is to the right side and on the run incomplete intended for Corey Donald for Donald incomplete Reggie Clark was over there covering. Nothing frustrates offensive coaches more than running backs coming out of the backfield and not running deep enough patterns. Most of the time, running backs just are swinging out as release men as a possibility if nobody else is open. But he was looking for Donald all the way on that one, but Donald was only about two yards downfield. Even if he catches a ball, it doesn't do much for you. Three wideouts. Cole and Jenkins to the top of your screen. They'll keep it on the ground. It'll draw a play to Williams. Out near the 42-yard line, he might have the first down. Tackle by Cecil Gray. I think he got it. Cecil Gray made the hit. What an excellent block by Tony Mayberry, the center. When you run a draw play, the center has the key block. He's got to be the guy to turn things back. Mayberry did that. And a good block as well from Lou Altabelli, number 78 right there, to allow enough space for Williams to get the final yards for the first down. Mayberry, that 6'4", 272-pound senior, has been a starter. This is his third year as a starter, so he anchors that front wall. First down, Wake Forest. A little play action. Now Barnhill on the run, completes it to Pohl inside the 40 knocked out at the 34-yard line. 23 yards to Ricky Prohl. And Barnhill threw a blue flame on this one. The underneath coverage man for Carolina, see if we get a number on it, he thought he had himself an interception. Watch Barnhill set his feet and pow. It went right over the top of Eric Gash, Ricky Prohl, not bothered by the hands waving in the air. Good concentration. First down at the 34. Toss sweep to Williams. Back to the line of scrimmage and fights his way for a yard or so. Ricky Prohl now has four catches for 58 yards on the day. In last year against North Carolina, eight receptions, 114 yards, two touchdowns, and he also scored on an end around for a rushing touchdown. And we have worked our way down to the end of three quarters of plays. You see Ricky Prohl, the senior. And Wake Forest, deep in North Carolina territory. We've got a tie ball game at the end of three. North Carolina 10, Wake Forest 10. We'll be back in a moment. As we spell out Carolina. Wake Forest and North Carolina tied at 10 as we head into the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Jack Corgan, and Mike Hogwood with you. And here's what's going on in this game so far. 
two turnovers have produced both points or both scoring opportunities for Carolina. And Aaron Staples has had a big day running the ball. Wake Forest, second down. As we start the fourth, Barnhill checks off at the line of scrimmage. Throws on the run to Pro. Down the sideline, Pro bumped out at the 10 yard line. First and goal. Good recognition by Phil Barnhill of the blitz. Eric Gass, the outside linebacker, was blitzing on the play. Watch the left side of your screen. Anthony Williams picks up Gash that creates a seam for Barnhill. Man coverage on Ricky Prohl, and he just runs away from the youngster, Cookie Massey. Comes down a little head and shoulders fake, freezes Massey, makes the catch, and is up the sidelines. 22 yards to the nine. First and goal, Wake Forest. Williams dropped at the line of scrimmage. Cecil Gray again. Nice job defensively. By the senior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, 6'5", 264. Second team all-conference a year ago. He may not show up as much in the numbers because a lot of teams run away from this big guy. But he is a solid player and certainly drawing a lot of consideration from the pro scouts. Bobby Jones brought in the play from the bench. He comes out split to the right side with Ricky Prohl. Second and goal. Wait for it. Barnhill. A desperation pass. He threw it away. He got good pressure that time from North Carolina. Reggie Clark, the strong safety, was blitzing on the play. It forced Barnhill to stop his rollout. And as he tried to set up and throw from about the 16 yard line, Cecil Gray's in his face. There was no place for him to go. And that shows the growing experience of Phil Barnhill. He didn't try to force that. No interceptions this afternoon. He made sure if uh, Deacon wasn't going to catch the ball, nobody else was. If I was Wake Forest, I'd put Prohl in motion and try to get him isolated on somebody. Third and goal. Quick snap. Barnhill tips pass, and it's picked off. Thomas Smith with the interception. Had he not been tripped up, he would have gone about 90 yards for a touchdown. One of the true freshmen starting, and this guy's about as true as you can get. He's a walk-on. Barnhill again with the pressure, trying to get it outside, and you're right. Had Smith not been tripped, he was going the downs. We still have a 10-10 ball game here because the Carolina defense forces its third turnover of the afternoon. Again, the pressure on Phillip Barnhill. The ball's deflected, and Smith nearly had a chance for a touchdown, and this has been the thing that has killed Wake Forest all year. Turnover is deep in the scoring zone. Carolina with Jonathan Hall at the control from its own 13-yard line, and Jordan goes down for a loss. Warren Beelan, nice job defensively. As you saw that graphic, Wake Forest got it down close through an interception with 112 to play against Appalachian State. That cost them that ball game. They fumbled against Army, driving for what would have been the winning touchdown, and in fact recovered their own fumble, but were still two yards short of the first down. That was with eight seconds to go, and then had to settle for the field goal last week against Rice when they got it to the 10 with four ticks left. And now they've been intercepted here with 14.08 to play. Now down to 13 and a half minutes in the game. And Jordan, the second man through, didn't get much. Fumbled a football. Back on top of it and will bring up a third down situation. I believe it was Carl Watts who ends up falling on the football, or did Staples get it back himself? Didn't have a real good grip on it. Of course, you've got the change of quarterbacks. The ball is loose and just squirted away from Marvin Mitchell, and Carl Watts was able to gather it in. Third down and a long nine coming up for North Carolina in the shadows of their own goal line. 10-10 ball game. All quarterback draw. Won't get there. Got to the 14, and that's it. So they play it close to the best, and now they'll be forced to kick it away inside their own 10-yard line. 
That was a big series of downs for the Wake Forest defense. They had a right to field down after the offense again misfired down deep, but they were able to force the three and out, give it back to the offense, and they'll get it up around midfield. Ten men up as McAllister set to kick it away. Now Wake Forest has the return set up. Nice punt. Ricky Cole will have room at the 32 on the run. Up to the 37-yard line, a five-yard return. We have a penalty marker down. And let's see what the marker's about. 49-yard kick. Well, McAllister's been Carolina's best weapon all afternoon. C.C. Daly will give us an indication here. It's going to be a clipping call. On a run back, 15-yard penalty, first down. So that takes away some pretty good field position. With 12 minutes and eight seconds to play in the ball game, still Wake Forest and North Carolina deadlocked at 10 apiece here in Chapel Hill. Wake Forest and North Carolina with just over 12 minutes to play, deadlocked at 10 apiece. Elsewhere around the ACC today, Bobby Ross still looking for his first ACC win at home. He trails his old team, Maryland. 14-7, and next week we'll see Maryland and the same Demon Deacons as Jack and Mike and I will be with you. Winston-Salem, hope you join us for that one. On first down, Anthony Williams. Out near the 27-yard line. About a four-yard gain before Bernard Timmons made the hit. We've been talking about the relative conservatism of the Wake Forest offense here in the second half. Well, to be honest with you, for the whole ball game, they've never really had great field position. Their best spot to start a drive was on their own 36. That's when they got the touchdown. Second and six. Barnhill gives it off. Anthony Williams picks his way nicely, and he's got a first down, and he's still on his feet across the 40. And a penalty marker in at the end of the play. Nice balance by Anthony Williams, the 5'10 sophomore out of Greer, South Carolina. Might have a late hit. Dead ball, late hit on the defense, 15 yards, first down. That makes it a big game, doesn't it? Watch the effort here by Anthony Williams. Has to spin to find one opening. Keeps his balance by putting his hand down. Shifts that body weight again to spin away from a tackler, and then there's the late hit. And Williams now over 100 yards on the ground, 106. Had a 45-yard touchdown last week in the tie with Rice, so he's picked up where he left off a week ago. Barnhill on the bootleg. Wide open is Brown. They'll run him out at the 28-yard line. Doran Doran over there with him, but Brown was open by a mile. They have good success throwing the football on first down. Bill Dooley, now that he's got the field position, finds Brown underneath the coverage. This is what changes a wide receiver. He gets stood up by the cornerback. They haven't blown the whistle yet, and Cabong. Cookie Massey's had some big tackles today. He's the nickelback, redshirt freshman. Wake Forest moving down into North Carolina territory to the 28-yard line. And they blow this one dead as Tony Rogers stood up at the line of scrimmage. Looked like somebody false started, I believe, on the Wake Forest side. Illegal procedure against the offense. Interior lineman moving. That's it. Movement on the interior front. Trying to get that little extra half step because they were running a sweep to the wide side of the field and just a little bit out in front as Mac Brown shows the concern on the Carolina sidelines. Wake Forest down inside Tar Heel territory for the second time in the last 10 minutes or so and trying to convert this time. That penalty makes a total of 59 yards. Wake Forest has given up on the day. A penalty. Little draw play to Williams. Big hole down to the 25. Nice call there. Picks up about eight. And a good chunk of the penalty yardage. 
Kirby and Duke playing up the road and Duke at halftime. 21-7 on Army. Army's thrown what? 11 passes all year and Duke will do that in one offensive series probably. Yeah, at least. <laughs> Second down and seven. Blitz. Barnhill look out. Got rid of it. And he really got leveled by Gash who came in there with Timmons. They hesitated going back to it because they ran the draw on the first down to get yardage, but it appears in that second and medium or third and medium or long that Carolina's going to blitz from the outside, and it's an ideal time to run a quick trap up the middle. But trying to throw the ball that time played right into the hands of the Carolina defense. Both Bobby Jones and Ricky Prohl will go out to the top of your screen. Third down at seven. Barnhill to Prohl, but he didn't get the first down, I don't think. And that's unlike Ricky Prohl, who's a veteran who should have known he had to get a little more yardage to get past the stick. Isn't he short by about a foot or two? <laughs> Ricky mad at himself, too. Give you a split screen look here. Barnhill going back again. A little bit of blitzing action. Well, There's part of the, the problem, yeah, yep. he stumbled. He wanted to make sure the catch is going to be awful close, but about a half yard shy of the first down. And it appears that Bill Dooley is going to go for the field goal. But he does the wise thing here. Let's see how far I do have to go before I make the decision. Has that much to go couple of feet short and so he will leave his field goal kicker Wilson Hoyle in there Bill Dooley with 146 career wins he's been in these types of situations many many times Hoyle has hit one and missed one so far today this will be a 36 yard field goal attempt he hit from 35 earlier Wake Forest for the lead and no good Wilson Hoyle comes up empty, and we're still tied at 10. Nine minutes, 51 seconds to play, and it's still North Carolina 10, Wake Forest 10. I just did It's still a 10-10 ball game because I believe it's Willie Joe Walker who went airborne to get a piece of the Wilson Hoyle attempt keeps Wilson Hoyle disappointed. He's now missed his last two field goals. That one, Willie Joe Walker, the senior out of Bradenton, Florida, who went airborne to get that one. So Carolina's defense does the job. In fact, Wake Forest hasn't scored since their third possession of the ball game. Jonathan Hall of the controls to Aaron Staple. All the way out to the 38-yard line. 18-yard gallop for Staples, who's having quite a day. Ron Lambert, the guy who made the touchdown saving tackle, is still down. Last time we talked about the Wake Forest defense rising up after the breakdown by the offense in the scoring zone. This time, the big play nearly for a touchdown. Lambert making the tackle. He is still flat on his back. And now finally getting up onto his feet at the 37-yard line. Staples took a pretty good pop, too, as he and Lambert met at the pass. Staples picks up 19 yards on that carry, and there's his day. 111 yards by far, his career best single-game performance. And he has been the, the main staple in the North Carolina offense today. Jordan's in there now to give him a breather. Jordan gets the call for a yard. That's it. Michael Smith, the nose tackle, is there. Let's get an update on Chucky Burnett's situation as far as his injury. And Mike Hogwood's on the sideline. Mike? Well, the news is not as bad as first thought. The knee is, is twisted. Matter of fact, they taped up Chucky Burnett's knee, and he just took a couple of snaps from center to see if he could come back in and lead this offense. But the pain on that first step back was just too much. So it doesn't look like Chucky Burnett's going to play today, but he may not be out as long as we first thought. Still working on that knee's mobility on the sideline. Hall is in there at quarterback as a second down and nine. The Tar Heels at their own 40-yard line. Here comes the blitz. And Staples takes it straight ahead behind Crowley. Picked up three or four, and it's still going to bring up third down at about four to go. 
That's a unit they have on the sidelines to cool people down. That's an air conditioner with some tubing hooked up, and you actually sit inside of that contraption and cool yourself off. Unfortunately, it's a one person only and one size not, fits all. Not an extra pair of slacks or a vest that go along with it. There's been it's some Monday mornings I'd like to have one of those. Third down at five for Jonathan Hall. Screen pass, little swing out to Staples, and he's going to lose yardage. It may have just been a pass out in the flat. It looked at first as though it was going to be a screen pass, and James DuBose messed up whatever the plan was for North Carolina. It was going to be a screen, but you've got to be able to take care of the outside linebacker. See, Staples setting up for it, but James DuBose with an excellent open field play to step around the blocker and then make the one-arm tackle. So McAllister will kick. North Carolina has a fourth down and nine. He got another beautiful putt. Ricky Prohl will fair catch this one. And he takes it at the 19-yard line. 41-yard kick. Great hang time again, and Prohl's forced to take the fair catch. With seven minutes and 34 seconds to go, Wake Forest and North Carolina deadlock here in Chapel Hill. I we started the game even. We're still even with 7.34 to play. And again, the Demon Deacons with not the greatest field position in the world, starting just outside their, their own 19-yard line. So they still have the chance for the win, though. And they'll go to the air. Barnhill. The Mr. Dependable, Ricky Prohl, out at the 27-yard line. We're going to go with the split screen look again as for the fifth time this afternoon, Phil Barnhill finds Ricky Prohl. It's just a little turnout, get some yardage, set up a second and short situation. Reggie Clark making sure that Ricky Prohl didn't get any more than the seven yards. Ricky Prohl now 28 catches on the season, came in leading the ACC, and he's not hurting himself today. Williams first down run off the left side. And he followed Steve Ainsworth, who was in there for Scott Swanson, who was injured. And Ainsworth did a nice job. Tony Mayberry, the center out there, and they blasted out for a first down. Anthony Williams has certainly stepped to the forefront for Wake Forest in terms of their running game. Tony Rogers was the starter at the beginning of the year, but he got hurt in the first half of the game with Appalachian State. Corey Donald and Williams have split the time coming into today. It's been pretty much Williams this afternoon. Wake at its own 32. Play action for Barnhill. Pump fakes, goes deep on the sideline for Prohl, and he overshot him, and he was open. Prohl put a nice move on Torin Doran. That's a nice matchup out there, and Barnhill's not too happy with himself. If he'd have pulled the string a little bit on that one, Prohl might have been off to the races. Little down, out, and up, and Dorn bit on the out fake. You've got to be able to put that ball in before the deep safety. In this case, it was Doxy Jordan could get over there, and the ball just sailed a little bit on Philip Barnhill. So one thing, when you throw on first down, you've got to complete it. Otherwise, you start creating that big hole, set up the blitzing situations for the defense. Barnhill 14 out of 27 on the day. And the ball of the fullback takes it for a couple. And it still will bring up the third down and long situation. Dwight Hollier made the hit. Now you're up against it a little bit. Third and about eight yards to go for the first down. Clock starting to become a factor. You're worried about field position. Carolina feels if they can stop them here, they're going to get the ball in decent field position to try and make one more drive. Wake Forest wants to keep the ball and keep running down that clock. Wake Forest 5 of 13 on their third down conversions today. Here comes the pressure. Barnhill got away. Prohl can't make the catch at the 50. Too much of a jump ball over there, and Cliff Baskerville, the freshman we talked about earlier, broke that one up. Again, it's the pressure that ruins this play. As the pressure came in, there was not much Barnhill could do. He actually throws into coverage. He was just hoping that Prohl, with his athletic ability, would come up with a good play here, but that's even too much to ask of Ricky Prohl. Punt, a line drive. Across the 35 to the 36, we have flags down. Might have a holding call. 
Matthew. On that return, a 12-yard return by Felton. Either a hold or a clip, Brad. Sheik had to just get rid of the ball, and he line-drived it and actually got a pretty good uh, line-drive kickoff, and the penalty makes it even better. Clip in on the run back. First down and 10. So they back it up to the 15-yard line. Jockey Burnett on the sideline with the ice bag on the left knee. And we'll only hope that uh, that is not going to be a serious problem for the freshman quarterback who North Carolina fans are hanging the hopes on for years to come. Big sequence here. The Wake Forest defense wants to force the three and out to gain field position. Carolina has got to move the ball if they want to win this one. Here's the guy that's moved it for him today, Staples, but he got only a yard this time. Moving over there to make the hit was Smith. The defensive end, Terry Smith, who was a nose guard a year ago and swings over to defensive end this year, a senior out of Barbersville, West Virginia. Well, that was a, a good play in two ways for Wake Forest. It was short yardage. They also knocked him out of bounds, so they didn't run too well. They did knock him out of bounds. Now the clock is going again. They originally had stopped him. Five and a half minutes to play. Jonathan Hall delivers. Did he make the catch? No. Julius Reese couldn't get a foot down as Hall was a little high with a throw, and that's been the case with both quarterbacks, all three quarterbacks, I should say, today. East, Car uh, East Carolina and South Carolina doing battle today, and the Gamecocks by five at halftime. Bill Lewis has done a great job with East Carolina in his first year. And the Gamecocks have been one of the surprise teams here in the South. Carolina's only completed five passes today in 17 attempts. Here comes the end around, loose ball. And they're going to spot it at about the one foot line, I think. Randall Felton on the end around never found the handle. CC Daly says it's not a safety. Where's he going to spot it? The one foot line or so, I believe. Mac Brown trying for something different. You just said they completed only five passes, so they tried to run the reverse. And the exchange was not a good one. Jonathan Hall hit Felton down around the kneecap with that handoff, and Felton was lucky that he didn't get the safety. McAllister wants to call a timeout here. He's only got 11 yards to work with. Had himself backed up to the end line, and Carolina takes a timeout. That's because they only had 10 guys out in the field. That doesn't help your cause either when you're trying not to get a punt blocked. Again, watch the exchange as we show you the botched end around. Watch Jonathan Hall right here. See how low that handoff is down how about mid-thigh. You got to get that ball up a little more than that. And Felton nearly tackled in the end zone by Michael Smith. CeCe Daly, the referee, said he was just outside the goal line. I understand some of our stations along our network might be experiencing a natural phenomena known as sun outages, and uh, it's only going to be a temporary problem. We ask that the viewers not call their local stations since there's little they can do about the problem anyway. Again, the sun outage will be temporary. We expected overcast skies. We've got Carolina blue skies, so much sunshine that Jack Corrigan's got his shades on up here in the booth, so you can see the problem that some of you might be having. We'll get it fixed as soon as possible. You see there is not much between the goal line and where they will snap it to McAllister. Ten men up for Wake Forest. McAllister has to do a near impossible pass, just get rid of the football. He not only did, he got a nice punt. Wow. Ricky Pro way back at the 48 of Wake Forest, but here he comes the other way. And he dropped the ball, but he got back on top of it at the 41, maybe the 42-yard line. A 51-yard kick. That's doing your job with the pressure on. Pro got 11 on the return, and Wake Forest now in great shape with 4.25 to play. That's their best field position of the day. Aaron Staples has had a great ball game, but that guy right there, Mr. McAllister, has been as valuable to the Carolina Tar Heels as any player on that home sidelines this afternoon. He has done a superb job. 
this is where you want it in the opponent's territory with four minutes plus to play in a tie game. Pro Emotion man, Anthony Williams. Nice job out of Carolina defense. Willie Joe Walker, the man who blocked a field goal a few moments ago, makes another big play for North Carolina. Wake Forest has had opportunities here in the second half. They have not scored since their touchdown bomb to Steve Brown on their first possession of the second quarter. Second down, here comes the blitz again. Oh, they may not get the chance. Let's see. Is Carolina drawn off? Roy Barker made contact. Approachman call. Offside's defense, dead ball foul. Barnhill was changing the play at the line of scrimmage and gesturing with his hand, changing some things around, and that apparently confused Roy Barker. He made contact, and that's a big break for Wake Forest. Definitely helps the Deacons' cause. Second down and five at the 36-yard line. Draw play to Williams. Williams is going to be close to a first down. Looks to be about a yard shy. J.R. Bolden, the nose guard, made the stop. This brings up a more manageable third down and one after that penalty. But for Bill Dooley, if it gets down to a field goal situation, you've got to be a little gun shy. Hoyle missed one when he didn't hit it very well, and then his last attempt was blocked. They definitely want to get it closer for him as Bill Dooley is involved on the sideline. William pops off, second effort's gonna get him the first down at the 25. He's run that way all day long. And that may have been not enough for the first down on the initial contact, but he just fought for the yards. Regardless of the outcome of this football game, the Demon Deacons have found themselves a tailback. Anthony Williams spinning to the outside, picking up a crucial first down to keep the drive alive. He definitely would not have had the first down if it wasn't for that spin move and the second effort out to the 24. He's got 130 yards on the day on 25 carries. First down, Deacons at the 24, Carolina Barnhill. Going to the end zone, pro got it, touchdown! 24 yards, Barnhill to Ricky Pro. on the line you go to the man and for the guys in black and gold the man wears number 88 Ricky Prohl unbelievably this guy has never been a first team all conference receiver shows you how much talent the ACC has had at the wide receiver spot the last couple of years extra point up and good and with two minutes and 37 seconds to go in the ball game Ricky Prohl hits a home run. He sure did. His eighth reception for 122 yards. Ricky Prohl over 50 catches two years in a row. And the only other wide receiver, not only in the ACC, but in the country that can make that claim is Clarkston Hines and Duke. And that's two pretty good receivers that will both play in the NFL next year. We talk about how he could not be first team all conference. Well, there were guys like Peebles and Worthen and Hines and a few others around. Good strike, too, by Phil Barnhill, right in the middle of the zone. This has to be a perfect ball, and indeed it was. Prohl came down and made a good outside cut to give himself some space against the youngster, Rondell Jones, and he scores the go-ahead touchdown. Check most valuable players today, you ask. Now we're asking you. <laughs> and we're going to make you wait. The suspense builds as Hoyle will kick it away. And he got all of the kickoff. Doran Doran wants to bring it out to try to do something for North Carolina. Looking for a place to go, but Wake Forest will let it. Goes down at the 10, and now Carolina in a hole with 2.29 to play. Tony Hollis with the big open field stop for Wake Forest. Carolina now 90 yards from tying up this ball game. All right, 
suspense time's over. Our Schick most valuable players, Anthony Williams, 132 yards on the ground for Wake Forest, and Aaron Staples, 117 for North Carolina. Two tailbacks who did yeoman work today for those two clubs. As part of the Schick most valuable player scholarship program, Schick will donate $2,000 to the ACC to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference approved plan. All throws on the run, almost intercepted. I want to remind you, too, the new Schick Slim Twin Razor system reaches every place on every face, even for a guy like Mike Hogwood. Second and 10 from the 10 for North Carolina, trailing by a touchdown with 2.23 to go. And Brad Bill Dooley comfortable now. Excuse me, Brad Benson, knowing that he had both hands on the clinching play of the ball game and couldn't come up with the interception, Bill Dooley would have felt a lot better if Brad had hung on to it. You know it. Jonathan Hall, relief duty, down a touchdown and going deep. Incomplete, broken up, and a penalty marker comes in late. Let's see if we'll have pass interference. That was Julius Reese, the freshman from Winston-Salem, who was trying to make the catch. There's two men back there that converged on it, Lamont Scales and George Coghill. Defensive pass interference, automatic first down. George Coghill trying to step in and pick off the football. He's breaking on the ball and apparently made too much contact trying to step in front of Julius Reese. The interference goal keeps things alive. Look at the penalty situation for Wake Forest this afternoon. That one gives North Carolina another chance just outside its own 25. Paul got it at the 46-yard line to Randall Felton. 21-yard pickup. Carolina's not dead by any means. At two minutes and 10 seconds, that's an eternity in a fourth quarter. North Carolina has two timeouts remaining. Remember, they used one in that punting situation from their own end zone. Paul's got some room on the sideline. Nice job scrambling to the 43. this catch in the previous play by the freshman out of Durham, Randall Felton. Look at that extension. And then did the good job of bringing his body underneath the ball to cushion his arms so the impact wouldn't jar the ball loose. North Carolina in Wake Forest territory at the 41. Sidelines into it, crowds into it. Tar Heels trail. And Hall in the air. And again, he got it to Randall Felton, but he didn't get out of bounds. Got about eight to nine on the play, and now a timeout has been called by North Carolina. Tough part here now, only one left for Macron. And we've got a timeout with 1.49 to play. Wake Forest leading by a touchdown. Back after these words from your local stations. Carolina with one timeout left, trailing by a touchdown with 1.49 to play at a second down and almost two yards to go at the Wake Forest 32-yard line. Jonathan Hall has warmed up a little bit when he's had to. And it is complete to the five and out of bounds. Nice job by Felton again. James DuBose of Wake Forest saying that Felton catches this ball out of bounds. But he had the feet in and had control of the ball before body made contact with the turf. Remember, a field goal does North Carolina no good. They've got a first down just inside the Wake Forest 25-yard line. There you see where North Carolina had to start this with not a lot of time to work. Ball deep. route by the youngster. A little outside looked and broke it back inside and nearly got himself into the end zone. Who would have thought when the ball was back in the 10-yard line that Bill Dooley would be confronting this kind of situation? 
and now Wake Forest wants a timeout. And this will give North Carolina's offense a chance to talk it over with Mac Brown. And talk about deja vu for the Demon Deacons. They took the lead last week against Rice and then saw Rice come right down the field in the closing minutes to score a touchdown and take the lead. They were able to come back and kick a field goal to gain the tie, but they are not doing the job they wanted to do this afternoon after gaining the lead. Time now for our option play of the game brought to you by option gray coverage for men, the advanced way to get rid of the gray. Option play of the game. Well, at the time, we thought this was going to be the game winner as Philip Barnhill delivered a 24-yard strike to Ricky Prohl that put Wake Forest up 17 to 10. But Jonathan Hall has engineered the Tar Heels 89 yards, four out of five for 60 of those yards by Hall on the drive. Inside the one, first and goal. Staples the tailback, Benefield the up man. Benefield. for two. The little guy goes airborne again and rolls himself right over the pile. North Carolina, one and three overall, 0 oh and one in the ACC. Bill Dooley's Deacons, 0-3 oh and one overall. I said at the top of the show, somebody would have an ACC win when this was over, barring a tie, and North Carolina will not play for the tie. 90-yard drive and seven plays, and they're trying to cap it with two. Ball on the bootleg. It's broken up. James DeBose. that effort to get the touchdown but now there's still one point shot one both sides excuse me Brad both sides look confused the Wake Forest defense look confused Paul almost stopped and called a timeout and he's throwing into all kinds of coverage he was trying to hit his tight end and James DuBose was right there the underneath man Either it was the tight end or maybe it was Mike Falkerson, the fullback, who had slipped out. Yeah, Falkerson in triple coverage right there. So Wake Forest now has to run out the remaining 135 if they can to get their first victory of the year. First, I'm th sure they're going to have to survive the onside kick first. Well, that's true. Wake Forest by a point. Boy, this has been a good ball game. Well, they said it was a one-point ball game in the odds makers' <laughs> estimation, and they were right on the button with this one. Mac Brown's Tar Heels scoring drive was 90 yards in seven plays. 102 is all it took them to go the length of the field and Benefield from a yard out. But Bill Dooley is smiling because the two-point conversion was broken up. And now it looks like it's going to be one of those student body left jobs as Waltney will tee it up and kick it onside with nine men to his left. Nine men to the left and one safety man over to the right side as Waltney's going to attempt the onside kick. Remember, he's got to travel 10 yards. He's got the go ahead. Here it comes. Pretty good kick. But a nice job. It might be Anthony Williams, the tailback who's been brilliant all day, who just fielded that. No, it's Steve Brown who has a touchdown catch today. Well, you put your sure-handed people on both ends. They had Prohl at the top of the screen and Steve Brown on the bottom. Waltney gets the perfect bounce. So it takes that second hit and goes high, and you hope it gets high enough. The only thing Carolina didn't do was try and get a piece of that ball to deflect it away from Brown, and when he got the clean shot at it, he secured it and perhaps secured the victory. But just 135 to play. North Carolina can only stop it once as Barnhill goes down. And 
127, 126. Wake Forest has been so close on three of the four occasions this year. In fact, have a tie and three losses in their four outings. Looks like they're headed to win number one. We're going to see the Deacons again next week as well. And again, this was a ball game when they could have scored a lot more than 17 points. It's been the frustration for Bill Dooley's group. And now a penalty for delay a game, and Wake Forest trying to utilize all the time they can. The game on the offense. The clock will start on the snap. 52 seconds to play. And unless something drastic happens in those final 52 seconds, Bill Dooley's going to find himself a three-time in a row victor against his former employers. And he's going to win his 42nd game here at Keenan Stadium. But only a couple of those have been as head man of the Demon Deacons. Now North Carolina will utilize its final timeout with 49 seconds left. Well, the delay a game call, I don't think Bill wanted to do that. I think he wanted Philip Barnhill to snap it just before the 25-second huddle clock expired because now there's a situation, even after they run this play, they're going to have to run one more play, which means you have to punt the ball because you don't want to turn it over on downs and have Carolina be in a situation for a miracle. And had he been able to snap that ball, Carolina would have stopped it once, but they wouldn't have been able to get an opportunity to turn the ball over. So that's something that a quarterback has to learn, and I'm sure that's something that Bill is going to talk to Philip Barnhill about as you look at Chucky Barnett up and hobbling around. That's a great point you made, Jack. There's 49 seconds left of this football game, and this next play on a third down and 20 situation will take maybe four or five seconds, and then you add 25 to that, and they will have to punt the ball. There'll be time for maybe a play for North Carolina offensively, or there's always a possibility of a long punt return. A lot of things can happen. Let's see how Wake Forest plays it. Barnhill's going to waste as much time as possible. And now he goes down back at the 32 with 43 seconds and the clock winding down. So they're going to have to kick it with somewhere around 17 seconds, I would guess. 15 to 17, somewhere in that area. Under a half minute. Forest is just going to wait and wait and wait. They'll long take as the delay of game penalty again. The huddle clock is now at 10. So there will be about six seconds left when they get called for delay of game. Fourth and 30 at the 32. Actually, five seconds. But still a situation where they've got to finish off those five seconds. Because it being fourth down, you couldn't just run around and touch your knee down because the clock stops and change of possession. So now do you send everybody or do you put someone back in punt return formation? I guess they're going to send Felton back there. They'll put some heat on Kim Sheik, you can bet. Here comes Carolina. Sheik got the kick away, and this is the last play of the game. Felton at midfield. Flags are down. Kelton got a nice return. I think probably an illegal block on North Carolina, which will let this game come to a close. Bill Dooley wants to know if it's against Carolina. If so, obviously declined by Wake Forest to end the game. And we'll get the official word right now. Clipping on the run back. Penalty declined. The game is over. There you have it. Game's over. Good one it was. Bill Dooley gets his first victory of the season. Wake Forest won three and one. They're one and one in the ACC, and Bill's looking for Mac Brown. There he is. Disappointment for Mac Brown, obviously, but he played it for the victory on the two-point conversion a couple of minutes ago, and so he is 0-2 in the ACC. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Mike? All right, we've got Bill Dooley with us. <laughs> that first win was a long time coming, wasn't it, Well, it certainly was. We, uh, we kept, kept turning the ball over hurting ourselves but 
the good thing about this football team, they kept coming back. They kept giving the effort, didn't give up, and finally uh, got the victory. I tell you, it was close. It was Harry. What about uh, your running back? You found a tailback today, a, a, a typical Bill Dooley tailback. Well, Anthony Williams looked very good, and uh, I think he's holding on to the ball, and that was only his problem. And, uh, you know, we've got to do better in the running game, but... Uh, I'm very pleased that we came up and won this game, particularly here at Chapel Hill. What is it about you against uh, your old uh, North Carolina guys here? You have some kind of Bill Dooley magic over there. Oh, we were just very fortunate, Mike, and uh, the good effort of our football team to never quit. You know, a year ago, you had such a fine season. This year, off to a slow start. A win like this does amazing things for a football team and a football coach. Doesn't well, it? a win always helps. There's no doubt about it. Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. Coach, go celebrate with your team. That's Bill Dooley, coach of the Wake Forest team and Deacons. His team has just defeated the University of North Carolina here in Chapel Hill. 17 to 16, as you can tell. Uh, Bill Dooley oftentimes isn't a man of many words, but uh, when he wins a football game like the one today, there is a big smile on his face. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Wake Forest survives here in Chapel Hill, I guess is the best way to put it. They win it by one, 17 to 16. Two teams that uh, Jack obviously came in hungry for a victory, as we said when we started this ball game. One gets it, one goes home disappointed, but they both played very, very well. They played very well, and as you said, Mac Brown did the right thing. He went for the victory, going for the two-point conversion. Didn't look like they exactly were set up the way they wanted to be set up for the two-point conversion, which was unfortunate. But uh, for Wake Forest, they've been close so many times this year. This is the kind of victory, as tight as it was, that Bill Dooley hopes he can build on with his Deacon Ball Club to carry themselves the rest of the year. Let's take a look at that final two-point conversion play. Jonathan Hall rolling to his right. He was trying to get Mike Falkerson, his fullback, coming out of the backfield. But James DuBose stepped in front of the intended receiver, broke it up as Carolina comes up one point shy to the delight of the Demon Deacons. And Philip Barnhill, 245 yards in the air, and this is the game winner. This was our option play of the game. It proved to be the game winner. Post pattern for Ricky Prohl and Barnhill with a perfect ball right between the defenders as Prohl scores the touchdown. Wilson Hoyle's conversion proves to be the difference. Ricky Prohl, eight catches on the day, 122 yards and a touchdown. I think he can play in anybody's league. He's some kind of kid. Without question, he is now just one catch shy of equaling James Brim's all-time career reception mark at Wake Forest. And we have the good fortune of being at Winston-Salem next Saturday when we can watch Ricky break that record. And we'll see more of Anthony Williams. Williams, too, who was one of our players of the game, 132 yards on the uh, ground today. So, as Jack mentioned earlier, they find they found themselves a tailback. We take a look at the close ones down to the wire for Wake Forest, and this one came out on top for them. They had opportunities they could very easily be four and one on the year, but instead it's one three and one. But you had to get that first one, and as Coach Dooley told Mike Hogwood. Awful nervous at the end, but uh, a victory is a victory, and, and one that, as I said, they hopefully will build on the rest of the way. And we don't know at this point yet the final from uh, Atlanta today. Maryland and Georgia Tech were playing, and Joe Krivak's team had a halftime lead of a touchdown, so they might be en route to their victory. And uh, both clubs should be ready for that one we've got next week. Well, one of the things I think we saw at Wake Forest this afternoon, that Philip Barnhill is getting better and better as the season is progressing. The left-hander, the junior, replacing a great quarterback, Mike Elkins. They knew it was going to take some time. They still have not been able to take care of the breakdowns in the scoring zone, the problem that has plagued them more than anything else this year. But that's an experience factor as well, where you learn to do the proper things in those crucial situations to make them pay off for you. Hopefully, from Wake Forest's perspective, they're going to be able to do that in the ensuing weeks. We'll have some final words after this word from the Atlantic Coast Conference. From the D.C. Beltway through Tobacco Road to the hub of the South, autumn means football in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Including last year's undefeated bowl record, the ACC now owns the highest bowl winning percentage in the 80s. Find color, excitement, and a college experience this fall. Tune in or turn off for ACC football. The folks here in Chapel Hill go home disappointed as their club comes up a point shy and a two-point conversion try away from a victory over Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons were favored by about a point. They indeed win it by one today, 17 to 16, as Bill Dooley makes it.